and you're scared of chipping, okay? Everybody's giving you a 58 degree to chip with, 60 degree, you're fluffing it. I mean, it's so easy to fluff one of these things, you know, when you're chipping here. So easy to desell or get caught in the grass, okay? And we can do this down the fairway anywhere. If you have little confidence that you have a hybrid, you can just do a little putting stroke with your hybrid from almost anywhere where there's no obstacle in front of you. Now, what would we take as a good result as a break 90, break 100 player? Two feet, three feet, four feet, same as everybody. But what we don't want is double chip, chipping it here or teething it across the green or leaving it 20 feet away. So I don't know this shot at all, but I'm going to show you how easy it is compared to just using a wedge you don't know how to do, because I don't know how to do this. See, so I, I don't really know how to do this shot. If I practice, I could, could probably get better. So that's about, that's about four feet away, okay? It's not sitting great here in this rough. This is a seven iron. Take the loft out of it. The loft gets more difficult to hit as it gets higher. With this, you have a lot more room to make a little error and it'll be okay. We just want to bump and run it onto the green. You might have to pick a spot off the green, which is tough on, on Bermuda grass and tropical grass. If you play on bent or rye grass, it's much easier. Now, this is a similar situation. Just get the ball rolling, okay? Wait on the front foot, hands down the shaft, seven iron, off the back foot. Look at that, right? Now, that's even closer, because I know how to hit a bump and run with this. Now, what I don't like is people just mindlessly taking a 58 degree, which I think if you're trying to break 9 to 100, you don't even need a 58 or 60. You just need a, 60, a 56 degree. Now these are the most tricky because it's so variable because of the loft, because of the bounce, because of the lies. Anything can impact the shot, but with those, very little can impact the shot. And I'll probably chip this in, but generally this one is very inconsistent. It's going to have inconsistent spin out of the rough, off the fairway. It's going to stop short. It's going to go long. It's going to bound on. It's very fluffable. Okay, like I, I can hit the shot, but look at that. That's gone past, which is okay. It's still only two and a half feet. But look how easy the seven iron and even the hybrid was that I don't know how to hit. Now that's the shot you want around the greens. 50 yards out, you could use your putter. I mean, okay, not through this thick stuff, but on a fairway, you can use many clubs, but get the loft down, get the loft down. The 58, the 60, it's a difficult club. Just like the driver, the end of the spectrum of the bag, the lowest loft, the highest loft. Take them out, try play with that and see how you do. But use lower loft, lower loft gets you better chipping everywhere, all the time. Players, we've got the driving three wood out. We've got a downwind, 503 yard par five. Let's just get this one over those bunkers. Let's go. Beautiful, right is good. Oh, I don't know why I'm hooking it like that. Okay, what I hope people will understand is, I don't know what I have in here, but whatever it is, the hole doesn't play this length. The hole plays up the fairway, up the right there, and then it's assumed your third shot is going to come in from the right. So this is going to be much shorter shot than what the hole would portray. It doesn't mean my tee shot actually went this far. Now see players, we got 231. There's no way this went 270, right? There's no way it went 270. So what happened is that it's come left instead of going up the right, up the right, third shot on. This is the dead straight line. Now, what that distance is, I don't know. I should have checked on the tee, but this is not a 270 yard three wood, I promise. Little right, fly, fly. Okay, we'll have a pitch on. We'll have a pitch on, wanted a draw there, but we'll take that place. I mean, we're at Niganti. Greatest golf course in Bangkok called Nakhon Patom. Now, player, have you ever seen a tip quite like this? Look at this tip. Just put your, put your range finder, if it doesn't have a magnet, get a little strap for it. This one is a gift of Robert from uh, the guy who I played with at Tatum Ranch. Gave me this little uh, mag magnetic uh, strap. So now I can just strap it on. Stick it out. The 58 is going to be, I think, going to be better. The 7 has got too much here because of the, the Bermuda catches the ball. So it's gonna stop short for sure. So I'm gonna to have to hit the 58 and just G-I-O-T-G now. Giotige, get it on the green. That's a core principle of the way of the player. Number one, to get it on the green. Let's commit, get it on. Oh, 
like that. Now that stopped really quickly, very nicely. Now let's go Ignan. Let's see how it works with a 7-iron. I don't think it's going to be great on this particular one. Maybe a hybrid would be better because it's going to be too much backspin on the 7-iron. We've got a long way to go between us and the hole with an upslope into the grain of the Bermuda. So we might have to hit it hard. Wait forward. See, that's the danger. I mean, it's still on. It's still on, so that's okay. It's on the fringe. From this kind of place, though, you want to find maybe an angle to the left that's going to be easier for you and take a very comfy club on the down slope. Swing with the slope and make sure you get it on the green. What was that, Matt? What okay, so, in the northeast, I know you guys get a lot of these shots, you know, behind the hole if you go long. Like, it's quite steep though. And you're normally straight onto a down slope, onto a, a green. This one's got the hump in the way, so maybe a bit tougher. Um, but the same thing applies. I mean, you want to get those shoulders level with the slope, right? It's the same basic chip. And you keep your weight on your left side. You don't want to be falling back trying to get it up. You don't want to be swinging as if it's a flat plane because then you're going to hit it in the, in the teeth. You want to get those shoulders the same as the, as the, the turf. I mean, you can put the ball forward, you can put the ball back, it doesn't matter. But you want to be swinging along the new plane, not on a flat plane or on an uphill plane. You want to be on the downhill, swing along the downhill, just make a committed effort. Now, you're not going to stop it close because of the nature of the de-lofting of the club. But you want to get it on. You don't want to be too chipping or teething it across the green and too chipping back on. Just get it on the green, have a putt. But the number one priority is always G-I-O-T-G, G-I-O-T-G, get it on the green, Italian word. Okay, players, I'm going to hold out every putt from now on. I'm not going to take any gimmies because I think you actually lose the addiction to listening to the ball hit the bottom of the cup. It's a very important sound. You know, if we can, if we can hear that sound, that's basically a birdie. I mean, 250-yard par three. If I birdie that, it's, it feels like an eagle. Nice par. Nice par. Fun. I don't like par. <laughs> we need birdies. Otherwise, what are you going to feed? What are you going to eat tonight? Kun gina lai wani. My don't My mia han. Not birdie, no tip. I don't know. I don't know. Eat me, man. And it's just going left all the time, players. Wow. We've got 220. It's a little downhill down there. So you know what I'm going to do, players? I'm going <laughs> to take the little 7 wood. Because I love the 7 wood. I think it's the, the most workable club in the back. I'm going to hit a little baby draw. Okay. Chip and a putt, chip and a put, you know? Chip in. Players, I'm not like the greatest golfer of all time, okay? But I'm your golfing daddy, okay? I'm here to put you straight, okay? Somebody has, you know, so people don't put you straight. They tell you what you want to hear, okay? Now what I'm going to tell you is I'm on a downslope again. Okay, you don't want to hear that, I know. We're hitting onto a downslope, okay? We, I can do the 58 here, I can. I feel good with the 58. Uh, so I'm going to do the 58 here for the sake of the, the gram because I think this is my best club. Keep those shoulders with the slope. Let's commit to a shot. Just try to land this on the front of the green. I'm going to open the face a bit though. That's the only difference. Okay, not, not the easiest shot, but I'll take that. I mean, it's tough. It's tough, really. You don't, you, you don't, you don't like to see this too much. So let's see what happens with the eight iron, right? This is the alternative. This is something you can also do 
if you're not feeling confident with your wedge, okay? You wanna see the terrain, how's it breaking? We can't land this at the hole, okay? If you're a high handicapper, maybe 90 or 100 breaker, maybe more 100, okay? We can't land it at the pin. We're gonna leave ourselves one hell of a long putt. You have to always take into account this, the lay of the land, okay? And it's gonna roll up. Even if you're hitting the highest lofted club, it's still gonna roll out. So you have to account for the rollout. So we're gonna pitch this, I don't know, 35% of the way. Maybe a bit less, but you see, it gets on, right? That's all we need. We just wanna get it on the green. We don't wanna be fluffing or teething these balls, okay? Tough here on Bermuda, on your grasses back home, cooler climate, you may be able to work out a better bump and run shot because it doesn't work as great on the Bermuda. What a good caddy! Hey! Hey! Well, players, I used to think this course was pretty simple. <laughs> Not so much from the back tees. Now, the, the next tees up are right next to that tree there. So it brings a whole different perspective into the course. Now you have like a bit of a, a gateway there, like a bit of a, a bit of a gauntlet, okay? Actually, I quite like it because you can't see that much. So all I can see are those palms up there. Th th three palms with no head. So I'm gonna go at those. Little seven wood players, we're gonna get this to about a wedge or nine iron distance, something like that. Maybe we could get inside that with a solid strike. Oh, no tea. That's perfect, girl. Perfect. Hey, Fon. Hit us with a Fonzie. Fonzie. <laughs> We've hit a beautiful seven wood there, the most versatile club in the bag. We now have 107 yards, perfect hasib hook, perfect 56 degree. We've got a little down breeze, so we've got to, we've got to, we've got to be careful. But I think it's a beautiful, you know, aggressive shot, assertive shot. Okay, so we calculated 106, down breeze a little bit, engage with the shot, see the lie, lies down grain, so we're going to get an extra couple yards. Negotiate, navigate, we're gonna go straight at the pin here. I love the shot. We're gonna grip down a little bit though because of the extra wind and the, the down grain nature. If I'm into the grain, I might just leave it the same. It's gonna pop, pop right up, less spin. This one might fly a couple yards further. Target, pin, pin. Maybe that uh, tree behind the pin, there's just a little left of the pin. Target, now you commit, cross that line, rip it. That's really, that's really close. That's really close. Chicken winged it a little bit, but it'll do, players. It'll do. We're at Niganti. We've got the Fonzie. We're going for birdie. Hi. How can it be downhill? Okay, players, we're going 151. We're going with a pitching wedge. We've got, we've got a breeze with us. We're going to pitch. We're going to put this on down the down grain. I'm going to tee it up real low, real low, so that club just goes right through the turf. That's the one. Be patient, Maddie. Be patient, my boy. Little right with a draw. Beautiful. Beautiful. Not my best strike players. Let's, let's hope it carries, otherwise I'm in a deep grass bunker. Oh, it carried. On the fringe, we'll take it. We'll take it. Funny. <laughs> let's go. Okay players, so I've been, I've been working on a shot. Let's put it in the, the worst lie. So that's not the best lie. Now, I never knew that when you open the face, you're supposed to open the face and then grip the club. I used to hold it and open it like that, right? So you see the difference, that's opening with my hands and then that's open the club and re-grip it. I didn't know that. So I've been working on doing that. So some of the like high floppier shots or, or open face shots are not so consistent with me. But I'm gonna tell you what Mo told me. So you wanna do a practice stro stroke along there and his thing and Bo's things, I think it was Bo who was like open to open, okay? Open, open, almost like keeping the drink on the face as long as you can without it spilling. 
wider stance, ball a bit further forward, open the club face and, and then go committed. Open, open, like that. I mean, that's great, that's like to a foot, but sometimes it's a bit sketchy. See the higher, longer one. So that's what I've been working on and maybe you can try it out as well. Is like, just try roll it right over this little thing there and I'm gonna trust the pace, okay? One of the things you may not realize, but you may pick it up slowly, is that when you see a line to the hole, your mind knows the pace. Your mind has given you a line according to the pace of your speedometer and stimp meter in your head. So when you see a line, let's say here, one hole, when I see that line, it's because my body's expecting a certain pace. So you have to trust that pace to hit that line. So you have to trust yourself. You can't doubt it, just hit the ball. Forget about it, don't think about how much pace. That's why I'm gonna look over this piece of grass and just trust my body to have the right pace. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But there's nothing we can do consciously to make it have the right pace. Just roll it over that piece of grass. See, so it's got the hole, a foot and a bit. I love these putts. These are my favorite putts. Just tap them in and let's go with a par. We could have got the bird there. You know, we could have, but we didn't. So we go back, have a look, let's see. Let's get it over there. I pushed it a little bit maybe. Okay, there we go. And that would almost be the bird. Very tricky. We down the grain, okay, so that's gonna be quicker. It has to go slower. As it dies, it's gonna take more break. Into the grain, you're hitting it harder, less break. You just take the luck of the draw. We didn't do anything wrong there. Made a little passkey, and we're out of here. Hey, Fran, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Hand away, mate. No, you don't agree. Okay, we're going with this three wood players because we know it likes to go left today. Today, not generally, but today. So we're gonna go left of the coconuts. And we must just remember that we are champions. We are the best golfers in the world. I am, top 5% at least. Uh oh. Now fade. Now fade. No draw. <laughs> Maybe. What happened? Fun? What happened? What happened? Now we have to hit this in three shots, not two shots. How are we going to make a birdie? What hole is this? What hole? Mm, we need seven birdies. Seven birdies, fun. Now, players, I've really liked the seven wood, okay? We've got 249. Get well, like two, Song Si Gao. About 249, 245, something like that. I really like the seven wood. It's a very forgiving club, okay? Like, when I see it, when I look at it, and I look at the shot, I don't see much of, a, of the course. I can see only a narrow part of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, the, the club actually makes me feel like the course is as wide as that green. And that's the, that's, the, that's the ideal situation with a club that you love. You have to love it. And I love this club. <laughs> okay, maybe I talked a bit too much about how much I love the club. Beautiful layup, sandwich. The place I know I have to stop talking, but I just can't help it. You, you are my friends. You are my friends. We're all alone in this world together. So this is my therapy. Very rare that I get to just verbally vomit my thoughts out on the course. I'm always playing in groups. So it was nice to actually get a cancellation today and actually just play by myself. Now we've got 130 yards up the hill. We're going to take the pitching wedge. Beautiful little pitching. Grip it down and a normal swing. Like, I don't even know where the golf ball goes anymore. I think pitching is okay. Wow. You know, why not on the full shot hit a pitching wedge like that? On a chip shot, it's beautiful. Yeah. Hmm? 
Alexa Fitlip, okay, I think. <laughs> <laughs>